and welcome to Messy Church at Home. I'm Layla. And I'm Helen. So, Layla, did you have a nice summer? Yes, I did. I did lots of playing outside and drawing. Oh, that sounds nice. And um, are you back at school now? Yes, I've enjoyed being with all my friends and my teachers. I bet it's really nice to see them after so long away. Yes, it is. So, um, well, I guess it's uh, time to get comfy and uh, everybody get yourselves a drink. I've got mine here. You've I've got, got mine too. <laughs> Are we ready then? Should we, should we do a countdown? Yes. Okay. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Ready, church. So, do you know what our theme is this month? I think Jessica said something about being detectives. Do you have any clues, Helen? Hmm, well, I've got some, uh, sheep. Um, Me too. Slightly invisible. Oh, you have too. Oh, slightly invisible sheep. I wonder what that's about. I, I it's an envelope that says, big clue. Oh, yeah, the right way around too. I should probably open it. I guess there's lots of sheep in the Bible. Yes. Oh, oh, a bit of a shock. There's lots of more. There's lots more sheep inside of it. Must be something to do with sheep. There's also paper inside. I wonder if I should read that one. What it, does it says, say? "I am the good shepherd." Hmm. Hmm. I, I wonder what that could mean. Let's find out. Yep. Hi, my name's Andrea, and my friend Jessica has given me a bag. Did she give you one? <gasps> Shall we see what's in the bag? What's in the bag? What's in the bag? Open it and have a look. What's in the bag? Oh, I wonder what's inside. Oh, oh, these could be instructions. Shall we read them and see what it says? Even though I walk through a very dark valley, I will not be afraid because you were with me. Your rod and shepherd's staff comfort me. Rods, I've got some rods. Don't know what I'm going to do with them. They're a bit like a walking stick that shepherds use. Oh, shepherds, maybe, maybe that's a clue. You prepare a meal for me in front of my enemies, and you pour oil of blessing on my head. You give me more than I can hold. Oh, wonder who my friend Jessica's talking about. Hmm, let's see. The Lord, the Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. He gives me rest in green pastures and he leads me to calm waters. Oh, Jessica's trying to tell me that God will look after me like a shepherd looks after his sheep. That I don't have to be afraid because God's always with me and he will comfort me even when I'm scared. Oh, I'm really excited. Let's see what's in the bag. I think it might be something to do with sheep and shepherds. Let's see. I've got some cotton wool. Yeah. Oh, and I've got some bits of green. And I've got some red wool. Oh, I'm just going to tip it out because I'm too excited. Oh dear, I've made a mess. I'm very good at making a mess. Now, mummies, we might need some glue. I'm using a quick stick because I don't have PVA. And we might need some scissors. And we might need some thread and a needle. And we might need to help each other a little bit. So, what shall we do? Oh, look. I think we can make some sheep. Let's make some sheep. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to get my glue. Put it onto my sticky like that. Some. I wonder how many sheep our shepherd is going to have. Oh, look, our shepherd has got one, two, three, four sheep today. And I found some goggly eyes, the tiny as can be. So it's a little bit tricky, but I'm going to try and stick them on because I like goggly eyes. You might need a little bit of help with this. <gasps> That's very exciting. There we go. 
when you make yours, make sure you give all your sheep goggly eyes and then they'll be really happy sheep. Oh. Go. I've just had an idea. I think we can make a mobile with our rods. And maybe we could hang our sheep down from our mobile. And Jessica's given me some lovely sticky tape, so I might just make my rod a beautiful green colour, just like the valleys and the pastures. Oh, look, maybe you could twiddle that while Mummy holds it. Oh, I'm not very good. I think you might be a bit better at this than me. So I'm going to put down there so it's nice and sparkly because I like to look at sparkly things. Do you like sparkly? Now I've lost the end, but we generally get the idea. Maybe you could go right to the end on both your rods and make them lovely and sparkly. I'm not very good at this, but I am good at lots of things and that's okay. So maybe the next thing we need to do is you need to hold the rods while mummy or daddy or whoever's helping you ties them up in the middle. So we can just go round and, oh, maybe you could... Either do the wool or do the whole thing. I'm just going round and round and round and round and round. And then we're going to tie a little knot. You've got to be a little bit patient. That means you've just got to wait and help each other. Because it's good to help each other. It makes people feel happy when we help each other. So I'm just going to tie that in a knot. So they've got a nice cross shape. There we go. And I've got one, two, three, four places to hang my sheep from. Like that look. And I've decided that I'm going to hang this in my bedroom tonight. And if I'm a little bit worried about something that's happened during the day, I'm going to look at my sheep and I'm going to remember that the Lord is my shepherd and I have everything I need. Just like a shepherd looks after his sheep, God looks after us. Okay, so this is the real tricky bit. We're going to need a grown-up to help us with this. So to attach our sheep to our rod, we need to use a needle and a thread. Okay, so we're just going to go through the back of the sheep a couple of times. very tricky but that's okay just need to be patient and there you go look I've attached my other three sheep and I've decided I'm going to use a little bit of my sticky tape because it's easier just to attach my sheep onto my rod so that they will dangle beautifully and I can stop and look So there I have my sheep mobile and the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to attach the lovely verses that Jessica gave us because we need to remember that the Lord is our shepherd and he will look after us just like shepherds look after their sheep. He'll give us everything we need and he'll give us rest and lead us to calm water. And you remember, I said I was going to put my mobile in my bedroom for when I'm having a rest. I'm just going to knot it on. Like that. And I'm just going to put one on. You can put all your little pulling pieces onto your mobile. And maybe you would like your mummy or your daddy or whoever puts you to bed to read it to you. So thank you for joining me in making something from my bag. And I wonder next time if Jessica will give us another bag and we can play what's in the bag and do some crazy craft. Bye, have fun. 
Well, everyone, welcome to the celebration. Thank you, Andrea, for leading us through that craft so wonderfully. And thank you to Helen and to Layla for welcoming us so wonderfully too. It's great that you're with us. Now, I think our big clue today was the phrase, I am the good shepherd. Now, I hope that Andrea's craft helped you understand a bit more about that. You looked at a song from the Bible, didn't you? Psalm 23, which begins, the Lord is my shepherd. Now, I wonder if you thought that might be a clue to who might have said, I am the good shepherd. Well, I can tell you that was something that was said by Jesus. He said he was our good shepherd. Now, a bit later on, our friend Elizabeth is going to tell us a story that might help us to understand that a bit more. But for now, let's enjoy the celebration with songs and stories and prayers. Here we go. Let's sing Great Big God, a song that reminds us that God holds us and keeps us safe and also has an amazing plan for our lives. Here we go. Jesus told about a shepherd who went to look for a lost sheep. I'm going to need your help with some actions, just follow what I do. But I think we need to check you all know what a noise a sheep makes. Three, two, one. A bit louder this time. I'm not sure I heard you all. Three, two, one. Excellent. Once upon a time, a farmer had a hundred sheep. They were happy sheep and they ate grass in a big green field. Pretend to be sheep.
but one of the sheep was a little naughty. He didn't want to stay in the nice, safe, safe field. He wanted to go out and explore, so he did. He looked over his shoulder to make sure no one could see him go. He climbed up a steep hill. Up and up and up and up. He ate thick grass and nettles. He walked along a narrow ledge. And then it began to get dark and he was scared. He was lost. He wished he hadn't been bad, but he was too late. All through the night, the sheep stood where he was, scared to move. He wanted to be back in the field, with his shepherd looking after him. And then he heard something. It was a voice. It was a voice of his shepherd. The sheep was happy and excited. He bowed to his shepherd. The shepherd appeared. He picked up the sheep and gave him a big cuddle and carried him home. And they were both very, very happy. enjoy a good party too which is why in your boxes you've got some special party placemats like this and ingredients to make a very exciting cake and I've included this because at the end of the story of the lost sheep that we've just heard there's a party the sheep and the shepherd are so excited. The shepherd goes home and throws a party. And in our verse that we looked at when we made the mobile in Psalm 23, the verse that you had said, you give me more than I can hold. But in other versions, it says, my cup overflows. 
And that's what I want to think about as we pray today. Here's a cup. And here's a jug. Now, God gives us so many good things. It fills up our cup, but he gives us more than we could ever imagine. It's amazing. So many good things. So many good things. Now, I would like you to think about the good things that God has given you. And in your packs, you will have a cup like this. A cup to represent the overflowing cup of Psalm 23. You'll also have some strips of paper or card. Now I'd like you all, while you're having your little celebration meal, to think of some things that you are thankful to God for, some good things that he has given you. That might be, thank you for the people who care for me. Write or draw that on your strip of paper. And then pop it in the cup. You might think of something else. Thank you for food. Write that down. Pop it in the cup. Thank you for my friends. Write it down, pop it in the cup, and look, you've made your very own overflowing cup full of all the good things that God has given you. You might also want to write down things that God has done for you. Thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for looking after me. And I want you to keep this cup on your table as a reminder of all those things. And maybe sometimes if you're feeling a little bit sad, life's been hard at the moment, hasn't it? You can pull these out of your overflowing cup. And remember that even when times are hard, when life is hard, when we can't see our friends, maybe can't do the things that we want to do, that God fills us to overflowing. He gives us more than we can hold. So we say, thank you, God, for all these good things. Amen. God is all around me, in front and behind, underneath and over me. He's always by my side. Spotting round me, I know God surrounds me. God is all around me, in front and behind, underneath and over me. He's always by my side. The parachute reminds me I am safe under His wing. Just like the bubbles floating around me, I know God surrounds me. Well, that's it for this month. Thank you very, very much for joining us. I hope that you will join us next month when we're going to look at something else that Jesus said and investigate that like good detectives. Now, the last thing that we do together is say the messy grace. So let's say this together now. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ 
and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. See you next time. If you're a grown-up, you might want to uh, think about this a bit more. Uh, after this celebration now, you can watch uh, me just give some thoughts uh, on what Jesus being the Good Shepherd might mean for us today. Bye. Do you find the idea of the Lord being your shepherd or Jesus saying he's the Good Shepherd? Do you find it comforting or do you find it insulting? I think we like the idea of a God who will look after us like a shepherd and care for us. We like the green pastures and calm water. It's a beautiful picture. But if the Lord is our shepherd and Jesus is the good shepherd, we, by process of elimination, are sheep. Smelly, dirty, prone to wandering off, getting lost and following the crowd. Sheep. This kind of destroys, I think, in a little bit, that pastoral idyll of the green, of the green grass and the lovely cool streams. But it's the stark reality The Bible says we are lost. The prophet Isaiah, writing centuries before Jesus was born, writes to the people of Israel. He says, we all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. We have turned away from God's way and gone our own way. We are lost like sheep. The apostle Paul in the New Testament writes to the church in Rome that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We've all gone our own way. Now, this is rather detached from that pastoral idyll that we started off with. But bear with me, because actually none of these verses finishes on that depressing note. Isaiah continues, but the Lord has laid on him, referring to Jesus, the iniquity of us all. And Paul finishes with, all are justified, that is made right with God, by his grace, which is another word for gift, through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. Now, how many of you have ever paid for a gift? If you have paid for a gift, well, probably defeated the object of it being a gift because gifts are supposed to be free. All these verses remind us that we have wronged God, that we deserve to be eternally separated from the God who made us to spend eternity with him. But those verses remind us that God himself has made it possible for us to be brought back into relationship with him. And what is more, it is a free gift. There's nothing we do other than accept it. But how does God do this? He can't just look over the wrong that we've done. Well, it's there in Isaiah, God lays the iniquity of us all onto Jesus. Isaiah continues to say that Jesus was led like a lamb to the slaughter. This is imagery that would have made perfect sense to the people he was writing to. They would take a lamb or another animal to the temple and the priest would lay his hand symbolically on that animal, thus conferring the sin of the person onto the animal. The animal would then be killed. The animal would die 
in the place of that human being. And Isaiah says this is what Jesus did. Jesus died instead of us. Jesus is the good shepherd who becomes a sacrificial lamb. He says in John, I am the good shepherd and I lay down my life for the sheep. There is truth in the statement that Jesus was killed because the Jewish authorities colluded with the Romans to get him executed. But Jesus makes it clear throughout his ministry that the only person with the authority to take his life is himself. He lays it down. He willingly died to bring you back. He willingly chose to take the punishment for all the wrong that you have done. He is the good shepherd who loves his sheep so much that he himself became a sheep, a sacrificial lamb. And died in the place of we, his lost sheep. Now, you today can choose to hear Jesus, the good shepherd, calling your name. Like the lost sheep in the story that we heard. You could choose to follow him. Choose to have him as your shepherd who will guide you through life. Accept that you are a lost sheep and come and be found. Now both Psalm 23 and the parable of the lost sheep finish with banquets and parties of feasting and celebration. And that is exactly what happens in heaven, it says. When someone turns away from their lost life and chooses to follow Jesus, there is a party in heaven. Now, we would love to celebrate with you too, because I think it's fantastic when someone chooses to follow Jesus. We've got some gifts for you, some welcome to the family gifts. So please let us know if you've chosen to follow Jesus and we'll get those to you and we'll have a mini version of the party that's happening in heaven. Maybe you want to explore this further. Get in touch with us. We'd love to talk to you. Even though we're all apart at the moment, we can still rejoice with you and celebrate with you. We'll find some way to do it in a socially distanced, legal way but uh, do let us know if that is what you want to do and if you want to explore it further but today just remember you could choose to go from being a lost sheep to a found sheep looked after by the shepherd who loved you enough to die for you 